What's up guys, LQ here with the LQ Review and I'm going to do a um, old school comic book review here. Old school comic book review and we're going to have some fun looking at not just the comic, the art, but also some of the stuff that comes with it. So we're going to do Star Trek number 8. This is the Marvel comic, Star Trek number 8, that was produced or published in um, November of 1980. So let's go ahead and take a look at Star Trek number eight, when it was under its Marvel run. Star Trek is, the rights to Star Trek have fallen under several um, different publishers. You know, DC had it for a long time, IDW has it now, but uh, Marvel had a very, had a very uh, substan substantial run with uh, Star Trek as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. So there's the cover. Spock featured prominently in almost all the Marvel um, Star Trek stories because Spock was incredibly popular at the time. Still is. So there you can see November 1980. I was two months old. Two months old when this comic was made. <laughs> so here you see the, the, the um, well... I'll talk about that in a second. Here's some of our fun ads that we got in those books. So here you see, let's go ahead and talk about it now. Um, you know, these comics were pretty famous for their block storytelling. You know, where you had your block, your block, your block, your block, your block. Sometimes you'd have larger blocks, sometimes you'd have smaller blocks, but they were very, they were all very block storytelling. This was the way that comics did it back then. Block storytelling, um, and very, very cheap non-glossy paper. <laughs> I love these ads. Become a privileged Marvel subscriber. Privileged Marvel subscribers. Alright, so here's be, be an incredible hunk of a man in seven days. Like, did people really buy this stuff? Like, they had to have. Self-defense, kung fu, and karate. People had to have bought this stuff. But, like, <laughs> I can't relate to that. I can't relate to seeing an ad in a comic book and saying, yep, I'm going to buy that. All right, there's some more of the Star Trek box storytelling. Here's old school video games. I mean, that is as old school as it comes right there. <laughs> you have Hulk and Spider-Man. Help Hulk escape from his enemies. And guess how much these were? They were $8.99. You can see right there at the bottom. Only $8.99. $8.99 for a handheld video game that you ordered through a comic book label. <laughs> There's some more of our block storytelling. Now, again, this is all very art-wise, you know... I've got no problem with uh, the art in these old books. These art, art in the old, these old books is, is actually very well done, um, especially considering the fact that everything was entirely hand-drawn and hand-inked and hand-colored. Um, hand um, but uh, the quality of the paper and, and kind of just the similar storytelling to every other comic book that was out there some more of our ads, bodybuilding. There's a lot of bodybuilding stuff and a lot of kung fu stuff. I think they really wanted to reach those dorks. <laughs> Let's get those nerds. Again, Spock. Spock featured prominently in all of these stories. Kirk. All right, so here at the end of the book, we have... Um, you know, there's the end of the story. And now here we have a Fantastic Four story at the end. Um, specifically a Reed Richards story. And there we got the end to that Star Trek storyline. And then we have everybody who has ever bought in a comic from, from the 80s have seen this ad before. The Toy Soldiers ad. For buck 98 you can get a big case of, of Toy Soldiers. Legos before Lego was licensed out to every single franchise on Earth. So again, this is, you know, Star Trek 
this was Star Trek as it was starting to branch out. As it was starting to branch out and become a viable franchise beyond the TV shows, right? This was right after um, the motion picture. This was right after the motion picture. This was right a couple years before the Wrath of Khan. So at this point, Star Trek is still is still kind of like this um, infant franchise. We'd had three seasons of the original series, and quite frankly, they weren't that popular until they started hitting the syndication. Um, and then we had the motion picture, which wasn't that popular either. It was kind of like they kind of went the um, um, Space 2001 route. Before they decided, wait a second, let's try let's try to go the Star Wars route. And that's where they kind of started to take it a little bit later. Um, but initially they wanted to go for that thought-provoking, um, intellectual space 2001, 2001 A Space Odyssey. They wanted to take it down that route. And it just didn't work. So this is Star Trek still trying, this comic book here, Star Trek still trying to figure out who it is and what it's going to be. This is before the Wrath of Khan. This was before, Wrath of Khan kind of started to take Star Trek in a more action-oriented direction. Even though Wrath of Khan did not have much action in it. It didn't. But Khan was so charismatically evil that it felt like it had more action than it did. Um... But this was before Khan. So this was still Star Trek trying to figure out its direction. So these stories in these original comics were still very, um, they still tried to be very thought-provoking. They still tried to be very intellectual. They were not heavy on the action. They were heavy on the dialogue. They were heavy on the narrative. And I think a lot of, um, a lot of original Star Trek fans, I'm not an original Star Trek fan. I started, you know, I really started getting into Star Trek about 88. So, you know. Next Generation is my Star Trek. I, I discovered The Next Generation, and then I went back and discovered the original series and everything that came with the original series, including comic books. Um, so, all that being said, there's still very, there's still a lot of um, there's still a lot of good. There's still a lot of merit to these original stories, these stories of Star Trek finding its footing because. That was part of the process. That was part of the process of Star Trek finding its footing, was telling some of these stories here in, in comic books like this, um, like the Marvel run of, of Star Trek. So I've got several. Um, I've got most of the Marvel run. I've got all the DC run. I've got most of the Marvel run. I'm going to kind of stick with Star Trek for a while as I start going through some old school comic reviews um, because I've got a lot to say about the direction that Star Trek goes in um, in its comic books and in its theatrical slash TV form. I think Star Trek is trying to find its footing again. Believe it or not, I mean, I think that there was this point where Star Trek found its footing with the original crew in the movies. There were some really strong movies, guys. I'm sorry. Undiscovered Country is a masterpiece. Voyage Home was very good, and I know that lots of people say, well, the odd numbers were bad. Guys, the search for Spock was legit good. So, and, and Wrath of Khan is what, you know, the Wrath of Khan is the Wrath of Khan. So, um, they found its footing for a while there with the original crew. Guys, I'm sorry, Next, uh, Next Generation was amazing. About season three, it really hit its stride. And then it stayed good through the movies. Yeah, yeah Nemesis sucked. But guys, even Insurrection, Insurrection was like a really great two-part episode. Um, First Contact was great. Generations, yeah, they did Kirk Nasty, but um, Soren was a great villain, and it was a good story. So yeah, the next generation, they kind of found their footing, and then Star Trek lost their footing for a long time. You know, I think the Enterprise... Enterprise was this period of trying to figure out what they wanted to be. And then the J.J. movies. This was a period of trying to be something that it wasn't. As much as I like the J.J. movies, and I do, for the most part, I like the J.J. movies, especially Star Trek Beyond. Star Trek Beyond is one of the best Star Trek movies ever made. Um, and nobody went to see it, which is too bad. But, um, 
yeah, they tried to try they tried to find new footing during the JJ movies and now with the CBS All Access shows, again, they're trying to find a new footing to where they can get a new fan base. Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard don't really feel like Star Trek anymore. It's trying to become something else. And whether that's good or bad, we don't really know yet. Because you look at comics like this, like this, Star Trek number 8. This was Star Trek trying to find its footing and become something different than what it was. They knew that the motion picture didn't work. So what were we going to be next? And these comics from this Marvel run was part of trying to figure out what was that going to be. So I'm going to go over some more of these comics as we uh, some more from the Marvel run and the DC run as we uh, get into this series. Um, but uh, we are going to do a series of like old school comic book reviews and we're going to stick with some Star Trek stuff for a little bit. So thank you so much for being here at the LQ review. This is where I talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. <laughs> this is where I talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. There we go. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for being here.